buenos dias, mis amigos. All right, today I'm going to go over Luke 12, and my hope is that I make it easy for folks to understand what our future is. And I think this is very important. What are we putting our hope into? Right? It's this is crucial because we're not putting our hope into uh, fantasy land, comic book stuff. You know, we're not putting our hope into a Hollywood movie. Uh, we're putting our hope into everlasting life. Now, what does that mean? To have everlasting life in the kingdom to come. And I think Luke 12 is another example of, uh, of what it's going to be like. And so before we get there, I want to read, starting in verse 16, a parable. Alright, we're going to read the parable, starting at verse 16. The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentiful. Plentifully, plentifully, pardon me. And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there I will I bestow all my fruits and all my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then who shall all these things be, which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, excuse me, I read that goofy, so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body what ye shall put on the life is more than meat the body is more than raiment consider the ravens for they neither sow nor reap which neither have storehouse nor barn and God feeds them how much more are ye better than the ravens than the fowls of which of you with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit? If ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? Consider the lilies, how they grow. They toil not, they spin not, and yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothe the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye what ye shall eat and what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind for all these things do the nations of the world seek after and your father knows that ye have need of these things but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, 
a treasure in the heavens that fails not, where no thief approaches, neither moth corrupts. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Let your loins be girded about, and your lights burning. And ye yourselves, like unto men that wait for the Lord, when he will return from the wedding, that when he comes and knocks, they may open unto him immediately. Blessed are those servants whom the Lord, when he comes, shall find watching. Verily I say unto you, that he shall gird himself, and make them to sit down to meet, and will come forth and serve them. And if he shall come in the second watch, or come in the third watch, and find them so, blessed are those servants. And this know, that if the good man of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched, and not have suffered his house to be broken through. But ye therefore, be ye therefore ready also, for the Son of Man comes at an hour when ye think not. Then Peter said unto him, Lord, speakest thou this parable unto us, or even to all? Are you talking to us or everybody? And the Lord said, Who then is that faithful and wise steward, whom his Lord shall make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant whom his Lord, when he comes, shall find him so doing. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has. Alright, now think about that. He will make him ruler over all that he has. Alright, so in the kingdom to come, we will be ruler over all that we have. All right, and this parallels what we read in Isaiah 65 or 6, and somewhere in the Bible it says something. Let me see if I can find anything. Uh, no, uh, give me a second here. Alright, it's early in the morning for me, so I just need a second to get the, to get the brain to operate. Just give me a second here, I'll find it. There it is. Isaiah 65, and they shall build houses and, ha and inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards and eat of the fruit of them. They shall not build and another inhabit, they shall not plant and another eat. Alright? So, think about that. Think about these two verses. He will make him ruler over all that he has. They shall not build in another habit. They shall not plant in another eat. Alright, so in the kingdom to come, you're not going to be working for somebody else. You're not going to be building somebody else's house. You're not going to be planting somebody else's food basically right uh, you're gonna be everything that you do is for your self you're not under another man and neither is another man under you now that is completely different than the world that we're living in now is it not? Alright. That's important to understand, I think. 
I mean, it's <laughs> because to believe anything else is to believe in eternal hell. Really? I mean, think about this. Uh, et for all eternity, you believe that you're going to be under another man? That some man is going to rule over you for all eternity? That's not heaven. That's hell. Now, I know a lot of preachers out there talking about the other way around. For all eternity, I'm going to rule over you. I'm going to have rewards in heaven. And I'm going to rule over you for all eternity. That That's wicked. That's pure wickedness. Listen to them. Listen. Open your ears. And listen. To what these preachers are teaching today. It does not square with the Bible, with the Word of God. It doesn't. So again, in the kingdom to come, we have 100% freedom. We have eternal life. All that we have is ours. Right? So all that I have is mine, and all that you have is yours. I have no advantage over you, and you have no advantage over me. All right, now consider the rich man today. The rich man today has enormous power, uh, lots of money and influence. He can do great things. He can do more in one day than what a poor guy like me can do in my entire life. He could feed thousands upon thousands of people in one day. And I couldn't do that in my entire life. I could not equal that. Consider the thief on the cross when he said to Jesus, Remember me. And Jesus says, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now, think about how many old ladies did that guy walk across the street? None. Well, think about... The, the rich, powerful and um, influencer, uh, uh, the preacher, today. He can walk old ladies across the street one after another all day long. So will his rewards in heaven be greater than the guy, the man that was nailed to a cross who couldn't move? He couldn't get down from the cross. He was nailed to it. He couldn't get down to help old ladies cross the street. So he gets no rewards. He just gets to sit on the sideline and watch. While you parade around in your fancy suits. Your fancy cars. No, 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 no. That's, that's not paradise. That's not paradise. Now paradise is equality, right? We're all equal. We're all equal with God. We're all equal with one another. Let's see if I can find a good example here. First of all, let me uh, use Jesus as, as an example. He's the perfect example. That's interesting. Um, you know, this Bible gateway, it's gotten strange. It really has. I don't know what's going on lately. They're, maybe they're just having troubles with their server. I don't know what is going on. Okay. 
but nevertheless, uh, I was gonna that, I was gonna go back to that one, but I want to start here in John five. Therefore, the Jews sought the more sought, sought the more to kill him because he not only had broken the Sabbath. But said also that God was his father, making himself equal with God. And then, of course, let's go down here. Being Who, being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. See, Jesus was equal with God. All right, so Jesus is equal with God. Jesus is God Almighty. So Jesus came into our flesh and laid down his life and he died and defeated death and rose from the grave and ascended to heaven with the promise to return for us. So Jesus has led the way for us. He has came into our body and done the hard work. He has led the way for us. He has shown us the way. In our body, to the grave, back up out of the grave, and into heaven when he returns and when he returns we will be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye we will be changed from corruptible to incorruptible from mortal to immortal all right we will put on our glorified bodies and our enemy will be gathered at our feet and they will be destroyed devoured and then the holy city of God will come down from heaven onto the earth and there will be new heavens and a new earth pretty simple right but Jesus has led the way for us alright so when all this is completed and we're in a new heavens and a new earth we are equal with God so therefore no man has an advantage over another man it's pretty simple anything other than that is pure wickedness pure evil and you're I'm not gonna say you're stupid if you think that you're gonna have rewards that other men don't have in the kingdom to come I don't think I have to say you're stupid one thing that is for sure is that you're evil you're evil hearted and full of wickedness and you lack understanding is that fair to say rewards in heaven rewards in heaven what eternal life is not enough for you think about that okay so um, where was I going to go okay neither can they die anymore for they are equal unto the angels and are the children of God being the children of the resurrection in Luke chapter 20 so let's open that up children of the resurrection we are children of God and when we are born of God, we are a child of God. We are a son of God. If we are a son of God, then we are equal with God. All right. Now, um, in this, uh, in Luke 20, this is talking. Somebody asked him, I think, for therefore in the resurrection, whose wife of them is she? Okay. So this is. Uh, asking about um, you know 
So a, a man dies and then his brother takes his, his wife and, and then seven wives later, uh, you know, or seven brothers later, whatever. Okay, so uh, this, it was, you know, it's a good question, but um, when you know the answer, all, it, it's a little bit nonsensical to go one brother to the other because none of them are going to have a wife in the kingdom to come. We're all going to be equal. You think of right now, the husband is the head of the house and the wife is under the husband or the husband is under Christ. Okay, there's a order um, it, you know, and there's an order there, right? Well, not in the kingdom to come. In the kingdom to come, we are all one. We're all equal. Anything other than that is pure evil. You think you're going to be under another man for all eternity? No. No, you don't think that. You might think the other way. Oh, I'm going to have lordship over others because I've walked so many old ladies across the street. I'm going to have rewards like you wouldn't. I'd have, I'm going to have rewards coming out the yin yang. Huh? Is that what you think? Because that's pure evil. That's pure evil. Now, you'll hear like Mormons um, very subtly talking about this idea of having lordship, if you will, over an entire planet of women. That's not eternal. That's not. That's not good. That's pure evil. All right. In the life to come hereafter, we're going to be equal one with it, with the other. We're going to be one with one another. No man will have an advantage over another man. And this is what exactly what we're reading here in Luke chapter 12, verse 44. Of a truth I say unto you, that he will make him ruler over all that he has okay think about it have a good day